Get out. Get undomesticated. Labatt Blue. The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are. Pleasant Sunday afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Couch along with Chris Welsh. Reds try to win this series, and if they can get it done, it'll mark only the second time since the All-Star break they have won back-to-back -back series. They turn to Mike Leak. Chris, to get it done today. Leak won his 11th his last time out. Pretty good outing against the Cardinals. Well, a very good outing against the Cardinals. You know, Mike Leak has been up and down this year. Believe it or not, he's making career start number 140 today. Let's take a look at the last four starts. So, back in August to 23rd and 29th, he was nice out against the Braves and then the Pittsburgh Pirates. He got beat around by that one game in Baltimore, and that really hurt his earned run average. He came back against St. Louis. I would just write that Baltimore game right off. I mean, everything that they hit that night found a hole. Plus, he gave up some home runs in that game as well. So, Mike Leake is back on the mound. I know he wants to get after it here today. You can see what he has done as far as his own personal milestones. 31st start today, ties a career high. He's got a chance to go over 200 innings today and will likely do that. And he's also got 149 strikeouts. That's also a career high. So, it's been a really good year for Mike Leake. Meanwhile, for Milwaukee, Matt Garza will be on the mound. Garza coming off the disabled list, and he's made two starts since that time. Neither of them have gone very well. Well, the Reds really hope that Matt Garza goes back and pitches against him like he did back in 2013 when he really stunk it up. But in the two starts that he has had this year against the Reds, he's been lights out. He gave seven innings of one run ball. Another time he threw his best game of the year. That was a shutout against the Reds back in July. So hopefully Garza is still feeling the effects of that strained oblique. And he's not 100% out there today against the Reds. And he'll have a chance to win two out of three here at Miller Park. Well, we'll see how it happens today. Game three of this three-game series. The Reds and the Brewers here in Milwaukee. We'll take a break. When we come back, Major League Baseball celebrates our national anthem today. Jim Day will have more on that when we return.
I'm Jim Day on the field. Today marks the 200th anniversary of the Star Spangled Banner. We were recently in Baltimore. I had a chance to visit Fort McHenry where Francis Scott Key, after 25 hours of straight bombardment from the British, and then when they left, and in the morning, the flag was still there to commemorate the 200th anniversary. Right now, let's bring you the Star Spangled Banner. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose once of the free and the home of the brave can't get better than that and we invite you to join major league baseball's clubs and players as we celebrate the 200th anniversary of the star spangled banner be part of the celebration by using the hashtag 200 years the Reds and the Brewers. Let's take a look at the Reds starting lineup for this afternoon's affair brought to you by Meyer. 
Brian Price lines him up like this on the 14th of September. Hamilton, Negron in the two spot, then Frazier. Nazarocco, Phillips, and Bruce. And great numbers for Bruce against Garza in his career. Bottom three include Ludwig and left his second straight start. Cozart eight, Mike Leake pitches and bats ninth. On the mound for Milwaukee, Matt Garza. Well, the big right-hander now, six feet, four inches, and 225 pounds from Selma, California. Makes start number 26. He missed a few starts here in the month of August. In fact, almost the entire month of August with a strained side muscle and oblique. But when he is on as a very tough customer, as the Reds have found out twice earlier this season. He delivers to Billy Hamilton to get this game started. Billy attempts a bunt, bunts it foul. And we are underway from Milwaukee, Wisconsin and Miller Park. It's the ninth and final meeting of the year between these two teams up here. The victory last night gives the Reds a record of three and five here at Miller Park in 2014. They do lead the season series against Milwaukee eight games to seven. This one and then the three on the upcoming homestand still remaining against the Brewers. Hamilton starts the day at 258, six home runs, 48 runs batted in. What a big hit he had last night in the seventh, that two run triple that extended the Reds' lead from two to one to four to one against Zach Duke. Billy does not have a hit against Garza in the couple of games that uh, Matt has thrown against the Reds this year. He's nothing out of eight. You mentioned how well Garza threw against the Reds earlier this year in a game in Cincinnati on the 5th of July. A complete game two hit shutout in a 1 0 win. The fourth career complete game shutout for Garza. Off the mound to the second baseman. No play. Infield single Hamilton. That looked like it grazed Garza as it went by him. Yeah, once it deflects, it, it, Billy Hamilton is going to be safe. And Garza, if he's going to be able to get Billy Hamilton out, he's going to get his glove on that. As it is, it's going to be an infield hit. Scooter Jeanette showed good judgment right there, not even trying to get Hamilton at first base. So the Reds now, when you get Billy Hamilton on base, it makes everybody a little bit nervous out there. Well, he has, of course, the 55 stolen bases, trying to become the first Reds base runner to steal at least 60 bases in a season since Eric Davis did it back in 1986. Billy has gone 11 consecutive games without a stolen base. That's his longest stretch this year without a theft. Now, Garza has always been pretty good at keeping runners close. He's never had a season where they've really run wild on him. Broken bat will be handled there by Scooter Jeanette for out number one. A look at Milwaukee defensively behind Garza, brought to you by your four dealers. Second straight start in left for Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez in center, Ryan Braun in right. Left side of the infield is Mark Reynolds at third, Gene Segura at short, Scooter Jeanette second. Over at first base is Matt Clark. We see him for the first time. Jonathan Lucroy gets his first start of the series behind the plate. Catching Matt Garza. Garza making his 26th start of the year. 7 and 8, 3.83 ERA. We talk about the two starts that he has made since coming off the disabled list. The first one off was at Chicago on the 3rd of September. He allowed six runs in three innings in a 6 2 loss. Last time out here against Miami. He's able to get through only four innings, and in that one, Christie threw 84 pitches. And that was also in a loss of 6-3 defeat. A lot of pitches for four innings worth of work. Earned your money that day. Frazier, a three-hit game last night. Here goes Billy. Pitch a strike. The throw late and a stolen base for Hamilton. Throw from Lucroy appeared to be on the third base side of second, and that allowed Hamilton just enough leeway to get in there. Well, the first couple of nights, the Brewers had a different configuration out there. Lucroy at first base last night with Martin Maldonado, very strong arm catcher behind the plate. He actually threw out Hamilton. This time, even with Garza's quick move to the plate, Lucroy's not able to get him, and Billy's in scoring position. 
And you saw quickly the graphic 56 stolen bases the most by a Reds player since Deion Sanders stole 56 in 1997. That ground ball will not move Hamilton along as Mark Reynolds. He's played more first base than third base for the Brewers this year makes that play. That will be Devin Mesoraco. Devin last night a hit one for three with an RBI that was a run producing single in the eighth. Starts the game at 282, 23 home runs, driven in 74. We did that piece yesterday on the uh, very, very high level of catchers in the National League Central. Brian Price was asked about Mesoraco today, and he said he feels like he's opened up some national eyes with the job that he has done behind the plate. And consider that he has spent not once, but two times on the DL this year. Uh, really, fortunately for Mesoraco and the Reds, I mean, if you're going to spend time on the DL, you want it early in the year. And he has come back strong each time from being on the disabled list. Remember once he's with an oblique and once with a hammy. Yeah, he started the season on the DL with the oblique injury and then spent almost a month in May on the DL with that hamstring strain. Tell you what, if you're a fastball hitter, you got to like the challenge you see with Matt Garza. I mean, he pretty much comes right after you. Doesn't fool around with a lot of, you know, off speed pitches, no splitters and cutters and stuff like that. He throws about 70% fastballs overall. And then his next favorite pitch is a slider. And there is a slider. That's going to end the inning as Jeanette settles under this ball and makes the play. So the leadoff base hit and subsequent steal by Billy Hamilton goes for naught. Mike Leak to the mound. Today is the day that his club really starts to take off. They are entering action today. Five out in the National League Central. A game and a half back in the wild card. He puts this lineup out there this afternoon. Carlos Gomez, Scooter Jeanette, and then Jonathan Lucroy. Braun, Davis, and Clark. We'll see Matt Clark for the first time. And then Mark Reynolds over third. Gene Segura back in the lineup. And Matt Garza batting ninth and pitching against Mike Leak. Making start number four against the Brewers this Not year. Hard to believe start number 130, 140 overall in his major league career for Leak. You know, unlike a lot of the pitchers that the Reds have run out there this year, a lot of these guys really, you, you pitch them during the daytime and they all of a sudden become supermen. Like Johnny Cueto is one of those. Leak's not quite like that. His numbers are about the same or so during the day as they are at night. 
if he's on his game, you'll see him take the control of the pace of the game. I mean, he gets that ball and he is ready to go. Well, he gets Gomez to lead it off, then Scooter Jeanette, then Jonathan Lucroy. Gomez at 284 with 21 long ones. He's driven in 68. Has not had a hit yet in this series. These are two balls and two strikes. Showed you yesterday how fired up he can be after that strikeout in the fifth inning. Helmet flew off. He hit the helmet with his bat. Talking to himself in the dugout. He has the uh, Bryce Harper look going with the eye black. Here's what we're talking about from last night. He fell down in that swing. Here's the helmet cracking. Well, we didn't see the end of that. Field denied and a full count to the Brewers leadoff man. Boom. Take that, you naughty helmet. He was fired up for sure. Golden opportunity missed by the Brewers yesterday with the Reds victory here as the Cubs beat the Pirates in Pittsburgh. But the Brewers are unable to get over the Reds, so they still remain. Game and a half behind the Bucks for the final wild card spot. There is ball four. Gomez draws the walk. Brewers get the leadoff man on for the second straight game in this series. A look at the Reds defensively brought to you by your four dealers. Today they line up. Ludwig, Hamilton, Bruce in the outfield. Negron, Cozart, Philip Frazier third to first. Leak and Mezzarocco work together as the Reds battery. Christopher Negron, he had the home run here on Friday, his fifth of the year. What did I hear the story that Carlos Gomez on that ball bounced back off the uh, uh, hitter's backdrop in center? He threw the ball into the Reds' dugout thinking it was the first home run that, uh, that Negron had hit. Of course, he'd had another home run in this ballpark, uh, an opposite field shot earlier this year. And his fifth of the season overall. Oh, you have to appreciate his sensitivity. Yeah, he hit that pinch hit home run against Will Smith on the 21st of July here in Milwaukee. Carlos didn't remember that one. Leak from the stretch early to Scooter Jeanette. One ball, one strike. Yeah, I would really not be too surprised to see the Brewers put some kind of a play on right here. Now, the opposition has been pretty good as about ceiling against Mike Leak. They've had 11 successful ones and only two thrown out. But still in all, Jeanette, good contact play, pit, uh, hitter. I, wouldn't, I would imagine that a hit and run might be coming up any time. Not anymore. Jeanette at 294 on the year, but he has been struggling as of late. One for 12 in his last four. This Brewers team is really, really having a tough time of it in scoring runs. They scored over five runs a game in June, but they've gone steadily down since then, averaging 2.7 runs a game so far in the month of September. That's why I was speculating about a hit and run. No go now with two strikes. They came into this series 14 points higher as a team batting average than the Reds. They came in at 254. The Reds came in at 240. This has not exactly been an offensive series. The Reds have seven runs, 16 hits in two games. The Brewers four runs on only seven hits. Drops it in there nicely, does leak, and sends Jeanette back to the dugout, bat in hand. Now that is one of the five pitches that Mike Leak uses on somewhat of a regular basis. That's a curveball that he just kind of drops in the back door. Good job by Mezzarocco. He kind of stays still back there. Catch that ball after it crosses the plate and hold it rather than try to frame it too much. Mike Leak is one of the few pitchers around that has a pretty good supply of rosin right there on the top of his cap. Completely legal. You can't apply it directly to the ball, but you can put it on your hand. He also puts it, yeah, you can see it on the back of his hat also. He has it on the back, and there you see it right on the front where he reaches up. Not like he's hiding that, is he? 
Why would you? Now I do know that there were some pitchers over the years that used to use powder. Now powder has the exact opposite feel of rosin out there. Rosin is sticky. It's kind of like pine. It's like a dry pine tar. But powder, like talcum powder, baby powder, if you can get it on your fingers, you can throw a dry spitter with it. It's very slick, and that gives you a different effect on the baseball. I remember a couple of different pitchers that would, especially when they were playing at home with their white uniforms, would would douse their the front of their uniform legs with powder, and you know they touch it and get a little bit of a powder on their fingertips, make it nice and slick, and dial up that little moving. Dry spitter. I would guess that that is illegal. Yes, if, if you're caught, it is. <laughs> Luke Roy hammers this one in the right center. Gomez with good wheels will turn the corner, head on over to third. Brewers have a little rally going here in the first. First and third with one out. This guy can flat out hit, I'll tell you. I mean, he takes what the pitcher gives. And he never tries to muscle the ball. He's a he's a home run threat if you hang a breaking ball out there or get a ball right down Broadway. But that way, I think he was thinking that Mike League is going to go away from him. And he's thinking the other way. And even though we got a fastball in the inner part of the plate, his thinking was to right field. And that's why he was able to get that ball that was up on a line into the right center field gap. He had gone hitless yesterday, 0 for 4, ending a modest five game hitting streak. But he gets a first inning. Base hit here. So first and third with one out for Braun. Braun has hit into 15 double plays, second on this Milwaukee club, only to their third baseman, Aramis Ramirez. They would love to get one here. He is a ground ball guy more than anybody on this Reds team. 54% of outs via the ground ball for Mike Leak. Now he hasn't had a lot of hits against Mike Leak. He's two for 12, but one of those two hits has been a long ball. That's what Mike's looking for right there is a ground ball. On hit into a double play in the eighth inning last night. And he gets ahead 2 0. Reaches three and two thirds innings in this game, and he will, as Chris was talking about in our open, hit 200 innings pitched for the first time in his career. Already has a career high in terms of strikeouts. The innings pitch number he's at now is a career high. Well, once you hit that 200 inning plateau and you stay there, even if you're at 195 or above, but once you hit the two, number 200. You know, it just makes such a difference in the conversation about you nationally as a pitcher and about what a workhorse you are and how they can give you the ball every fifth day and how you don't miss starts. The leak right now is 13 games over 500 in his major league career. That's a four pitch walk to Braun, so Leak is not sharp here in the first. Two walks, a base hit, and he faces the bases loaded with one out. You know, it may sound funny, but after he went 2-0 to Braun, it looked like that was a pitch around to me. That he simply was not going to give in to Braun and give him a pitch that Ryan Braun could hit for a long way. Now, the guy coming to the batter's box can hit it as far as anybody. But he's got more holes than Braun does. You pitch him down and away, you got a good chance of getting the ground ball. Yeah, he's another one that has hit into a decent amount of double plays, 13 on the year. Three swinger, another hard swinger, as Chris alluded to. 249 by way of an average on the year with 22 home runs that stopped on this club, but one for his last 14 covering his last four games. Well, he's had some forearm problems. I guess it's his right arm that's been bugging him a little bit. See, he's got that wrapped up. Jammed there and a pop up to Phillips that is called an infield fly rule by all the umpires. Davis taken care of. Two out. That hurt from up here, didn't it? That is called getting in the kitchen. 
Now we get our first look. Young man called up from AAA Nashville. Matt Clark. Twenty seven year old who started the year in the Mets organization at double A Binghamton asked for and was granted his release in early July signed not long after that with the uh, with the Brewers and well he went down and did a pretty good job for Rick Sweet down at Nashville. Now look how he how high he holds a bat right there. I mean without knowing anything about this young man as far as a scouting report he's telling me he's a low ball hitter. Hammers this one into right. Bruce goes back but on the edge of the track he'll haul it in and Mike Leake survives a shaky first hangs a zero on the board reminiscent of yesterday and David Holmberg. I was brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. They close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Robin Young statue outside the ballpark. Robin Young bobbleheads being given away as folks come into the ballpark today. The Hall of Famer is the all-time Brewers home run leader. With 251, there you see his retired number 19, high above the uh, the ballpark here at, at Miller Park. Matt Garza back to work after an 11 pitch first inning, gave up the hit to Hamilton to start the game, and then retired the next three Reds. So he gets Brandon Phillips here to start inning number two. It hard to write. But Braun handles it. One pitch, one out. Garza, 30 years old, as Chris alluded to. He had some very good years in his career earlier at Tampa Bay. That led to a uh, trade to Chicago. Last year, he was. Uh, Sent to the Texas Rangers from the Cubs in hopes of helping the Rangers playoff hopes. That didn't go overly well. And in the offseason, he signed a four year, $50 million contract with this Brewers team. For back to back years, they signed long term deals to pitchers. Two years ago, they signed Kyle Loesch, whom we saw here Friday. This offseason, they signed Matt Garza. Well, they're, they're really leaning on Garza here. You know, he's given them a solid year. Although he's seven and eight, earned an average under four, that's solid. But they really need him down the stretch right here to pitch the way they were hoping to get him to pitch when they spent so much money on him. I mean, he has signed a contract here to make him the largest 
and most expensive free agent ever signed by the Brewers. So with that obviously comes a lot of expectations. Well, he was shaky certainly early. ERA right near five through the first two months of the year but June and July were very good to him over the course of those two months and 11 starts at 2 7 then the injury and now he's trying to get back into form just funny though he's always been a guy that has had tremendous ability and lots of talent just coming out all over the place but you know as a first round draft picked out back in 2005 which is by the way the same year that Jay Bruce the guy he's pitching to was drafted along with a ton of other really good players. But he was traded in 2007 traded again in 2011 traded again in 2013 and then eventually got a free agent deal here with the Brewers. So. You know that tells me he's. A guy with talent that other teams want a lot. But the team that has him isn't mind doesn't mind giving him up. Second out of the inning. You know when when you describe Matt Garza, his stuff is never a problem. I mean, he's got good slider, good fastball, moving all over the place, big guy, kind of durable. But the knock on him is that he's a very emotional pitcher, and, and if you can get in his head, that's when you can get him to go sideways. Like there was a game that he was pitching, as I remember, with the Chicago Cubs, that he and Dusty Baker got into a shouting match. I in think the, after the ball game. Yeah, I remember that. Alluding to something about he thought that Johnny Cueto was throwing at Chicago Cubs hitters, and that he said later on in an interview that if Cueto wants to play that game, that's fine. He can throw at me. I'll do the same. Paraphrasing there. Mm -hmm. But those that play with him will tell you that's just his competitive spirit. Nice play down there by the foul ball boy. Expecting and do have another good crowd here today. Nothing like last night where they pushed in over 45,000 here. But a good crowd nonetheless. Especially with the Packers playing. These are all the people that couldn't get Packer tickets. So Green Bay from here is how far? A couple hours. North. A little bit east. Now back in the day, the Packers used to come down and play a couple of home games here. Do they do that any longer? They don't do that anymore. That was at County Stadium, wasn't it? Towards Segura, he waits back on this ball and throws Ludwig out. And there's a one, two, three second turned in by Matt Garza.
head challenge app, you and your opponent each select four different players, and the person with the most points at the end of each game wins. Head to head challenge is free to play, so download today. Scoreless game here in the bottom of the second from Miller Park in Milwaukee. Mark Reynolds playing third base in this one. His primary position for the Brewers this year has been over at first, but he's made 20 odd starts at third as well. He gives Aramis Ramirez a break in the lineup today. This is a guy that's going to give you the home run ball, and he's going to strike out. And he's not going to get cheated. Despite a 196 average, he does have 21 home runs. Closing in on a month since he last hit a home run. Actually, it's one month ago today, he hit a home run at Chicago against the Cubs. That's his last over? Yeah. An 8 11. 8-14, I should say, one month ago. We talked earlier in the series about the Brewers bringing in Reynolds and Overbay to try to put together a right-lefty combination to play first base, and while both have had their ups, certainly they've had their downs as well, so much so that they decided also to use Jonathan Lucroy over there at first. And now Matt Clark gets the start today. He loses Reynolds on a full count pitch, so the leadoff man for the second consecutive inning is on via a walk. Well, you, you mentioned early on that Mark or Mike Leak was not sharp, and, and way I'm looking at it right now, he's not really sharp in that breaking ball yet. He got ahead of Mark Reynolds with the slider. He tried a couple of more. He hung one that, that Reynolds fouled off, and then he kept missing off the plate. Tried a cutter, and then the slider bounces in the dirt for ball four. So he's still trying to find that release point. And when a pitcher has one of those days, it's not like you can put that slider in your back pocket and forget about it. That's one of his main pitches. So you stay stubborn with your stuff. You keep using it a little bit at a time until maybe next inning or the inning after that, you'll begin to find a good release point and a good field. He can walk only one combined in his last three starts. He's walked three here in an inning plus a batter. Now it falls behind Segura 2 0. Oh. Segura at 238, four home runs. He's driven in 28. Sat out yesterday. They played Hector Gomez at the shortstop spot. Segura was 0 for 2 before being lifted as part of a double switch on Friday. Well, it makes Garth Orge. Scoot out of the way down there. The first base coach of the Brewers. See Segura kind of giving you an indication that he was going to try to hit the ball the other way, and he is able to do that. With Frazier moved in a little bit, you just don't get the angle that you normally get, and the Brewers now are doing the same thing they did last inning with a couple of runners on base. Todd did a good job to get off the base and get into fielding position on that pitch, but could not get to that ball. Anticipating guards at a bunt. He takes ball one. Six bunts on the year, sacrifice wise, for Matt Garza. Brewers left him loaded in the first. Two on with nobody out here in the second. 
Ed Cedar runs through the signs again down at third. Gets the job done. That might be the biggest ovation and the loudest cheer I've heard all year for a pitcher getting a bunt down. Maybe he hasn't done it well lately. Doesn't look like it died in the wet dirt right there, yeah. doesn't it? It's like he butted it with a two by six. I mean, it just dropped straight down. Now it's Reynolds at third and Segura out at second. Top of the order again and Carlos Gomez. Bruce on the run. Reynolds is going to tag. There's the catch. There's the tag. He dropped the ball. It's going to be a catch. And a sack fly. In the exchange from catching the ball to getting the ball into his throwing hand, Bruce dropped the ball in right. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Carlos Gomez. RBI 69 for the Brewers center fielder, and Milwaukee takes a 1 0 lead. Bruce upset with himself out in right field. Pretty good throw. He would have had to make to get Reynolds even though he's a big guy. Well the interesting thing is that even though he dropped the ball in the transition. Gene Segura is still standing out of second base. Good point. What's he thinking about out there. Maybe he was going halfway thinking that Bruce wasn't going to catch it. Now it's good to Jeanette. Reynolds runs pretty good for a big guy. They're taking a perfect throw from Bruce to get him, but yeah, Gene Segura, you're Milwaukee fans, you're thinking he should be at third base. Nice box seat out there at second. Jeanette struck out his first time. Hitless in six now in this series. And a good clutch hitter for this Brewers team all year. 330 with runners in scoring position. That's two and one. Walk a hit a sacrifice bunt. A sack fly to right is giving the Brewers a one nothing lead. First time in this series that they have scored first. In the air to shallow left long run Ludwig and he gets there to make the grab. Jeanette retired and the inning is over. But the Brewers score first. Take a one nothing lead.
by Elk and Elk. See his lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Talking about the injuries that Matt Garza has endured over the course of his career. This is just the last four years what he has gone through. 11 and 12, right elbow issues. Last year, a strained left lat. This year, a month on the DL with a uh, oblique strain. Missed a month. Not going to get to 30 starts this year. In fact, he hasn't hit 30 since 2011 when he made 31. That was the end of four consecutive years in which he hit 30 starts. In 12, he made 18. Last year, 24. This year, right now, sitting at 25. He'll come up shy of 30 this year. It's a beautiful thing about a guaranteed contract. You get paid as a full-time player, even though you might be a part-time player. Uh, you can see what he would have done before he did get hurt. And you know, Gars is capable. There's no question about it. In the minds of the Brewers, he was the best guy available out there for the money. And really, by today's standards, the money that they paid him is very nominal. Twelve and a half, basically. In the year average. 13 or 2018, if it's a year that they pick up his last year of an option contract, he'll only be making only 13 million. Well, there'll be pitchers around the league that'll be over 20 million at that point. So since Hamilton reached to start the game for the Reds, seven in a row retired by Matt Garza. Now he deals with Leak. Leak has 11 hits on the year and a 177 average. Reds down one nothing, batting here in the third. You see the big difference from Mike. What he's done in the second half since the break versus the first half. Career wise, he's a 235 hitter. Sends this one down the left field line for Davis. Played that off to the side, but makes the catch. Two out. Really kind of interesting because today, you know, you look at matchups all a bunch of different ways. And one way you can look at this is you've got one of the better hitters as pitchers, hitting pitchers in the league, and Mike Leak in there, and one of the worst in Matt Garza. Garza has three hits on the year, a batting average, something like 065. There are only four hit pitchers in the league that hit worse than him. So back to the top of the order now, and Billy Hamilton. Lone Reds base runner so far in this game. That's a good idea right there because Matt Garza does not field his position. He's always been known as one of those pitchers that it, it simply has never gotten it as far as that point. In fact, we remember that there was a, a bunk situation here in Milwaukee, I think the last time the Reds were here, where he was called off of a, a ball that was bunted right back to him by the first baseman over Bay. And that's not a bad idea by Hamilton, but I would much rather see him bunt the ball to the first side of the first base side of the infield. That way you you force Garza to get involved in the play one way or another. Either he fields the ball or he covers first base. And if he covers first base, it's a foot race. I thought one of the if not the most interesting he told Jim Day in that sit down interview yesterday is that he is aware that his bunting needs work and that's going to be his primary focus in the offseason. He said I'm going to take some time off and rest then I'm going to bunt bunt bunt. Well I've heard a lot of players say that I certainly hope that Billy Hamilton remembers that after he takes some rest and decides to come back because that bunting can be a weapon for him unlike anybody else in this league. No question. I mean, look what it did for Norris Hopper. I mean, Norris wasn't anywhere near the talented player that Billy Hamilton is, but he etched himself out a pretty nice little major league career for a few years, mainly because he could bunt. And he pushed bunt that ball. He was a right-handed hitter. And he would push that bunt to the right side of the infield. And, and if you've never been a pitcher and 
you get in that ball in no man's land between first and pitcher's mound and you're running into the first baseman and you're flipping the ball back and forth and you're trying to catch it behind your back. It's not as easy as it always appears. Taking all the way there on a 3 1. It's now a full count. Close, but ball four. So Hamilton on for the second time in this game. That's something else, really, that Billy has not done. A lot of this year, and that is draw the walk for Hamilton. That is only the 30th time he has walked this year. Well, the only way Billy Hamilton is going to draw walks is to learn to foul the ball off a lot because the opposing pitcher is going to come right after him. And he's not going to get, you know, four pitch walks or five pitch walks very often. His on base percentage starter of this game is 295. That's surprising. Really, that he's under 300 and has been most of the year. So, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a slow guy at the top of the order with, say, a on base percentage of 350 or 360, or a guy like Hamilton right around 300? As an on base percentage, who can steal you 50 or 60 bases a year? That's actually a rhetorical question, more meant for a sabermetric type of a baseball evaluator. I don't know the answer to that, uh, numbers wise. Well, I get, I, I see where you're going with that, and I, and I, I would say, even though you said rhetorical, that you'd want a guy like Hamilton, figuring that his on base percentage is going to go up. Over the course of the next two to three years, well, you certainly hope that's the case, and I would I would predict that too. And a strike. But Chu had an incredible on base percentage last year. Shin Su Chu for the Reds drove in 54 runs, and here's Billy Hamilton with 48 RBIs this year. Not the home run power that Chu showed. Hasn't gotten on base like Chu, but. The other parts of his game, I don't know that the Reds had wished that they had gone in a different direction at all in 2014 and letting Chu go the route of free agency, turning center field over to Billy Hamilton. Chu, of course, signed that long term deal with Texas, but has not had anything. Of the kind of year he had last year, this year, and he's been out with an injury and will not play again this year. That happened about a month ago. Well, right now, if you look it up in the league, the National League, the leadoff hitters, the number one hitters in the league for each team, Billy Hamilton, as far as on base percentage, is ranked number 19. You know, at the top of the list, guys like Christian Yelich of the Marlins and Matt Carpenter. Josh Harrison of the Pirates. Hamilton on the run. The pitch is ball four. So back to back walks after retiring the first two in this inning by Garza. You know, I'm not really sure there's a way to quantify it, but I do think that there is some type of an effect. There is a Billy Hamilton effect for a lot of pitchers out there. Not everybody, but some pitchers that are constantly aware of a stolen base. And they know that Billy Hamilton is a stolen base waiting to happen. And it may be right there. I mean, why would you pitch around Chris Negron when you've got Frazier, Mazzarocco, and Phillips coming up? So I think that may have gotten in the head of Matt Garza just a little bit. And that's why he missed those pitches with Negron because Billy Hamilton was on first. Splitting you, his attention. Yeah, how do you quantify that? I don't know. Frazier tries to make him pay. We know that. That is ball one on the appeal to CB Buckner down at first base. Rounded out his first time. Three hits in the game last night, four in the series for Frazier. 25 long ones, 74 RBIs, both tops on this team. Well, this is a little bit, Chris, like what we saw. Yesterday in the fourth inning from Giovanni Gallardo. 
sudden has lost the touch of the strike zone. Now well, we have a moment. We want to pass along uh, the condolences we should have done a couple of days ago to the Tory family. Older brother Frank Tory, the former Milwaukee Brave, passed away on Friday at 82. The older brother of Joe Tory. Bud Seeley, Commissioner of Baseball, talks about uh, they had a 60 plus year friendship. He helped the uh, Milwaukee Braves win the 1957 World Series in seven over the Yankees. Popped up. The inning is over. The Reds get a couple of walks, but strand them. And in the middle of the third, Milwaukee leads one nothing. There's a look. At the uh, plaque that's on the wall here in uh, Miller Park of Frank Torrey passed away Friday at 82. Well, right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, if you missed ye uh, yesterday during the Buckeyes game, check out Curtis Samuel's acrobatic touchdown catch. And if you missed any of the other college football action, read all the recaps from a busy weekend of Ohio college football. Plus, after the game, get the latest news and notes from today's Bengals home opener against the Falcons. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Bengals right now looking pretty good. They're holding the Falcons down to three points. They're up by 17 to three. Bengals have a good team, even though I understand A.J. Green has left the game with an injury to his toe. Maybe we can make it a double Cincinnati victory day. Always a good thing when that happens. Reds here in Milwaukee. Bengals at home against the Falcons. You see yesterday. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Friday. Friday. Ohio State yesterday. That is a foul ball right near the line, fielded by Negron. Luke Roy at one and two. This guy's had a very good year. He was uh, at one time earlier in the year the league leader in hitting. Well, he's had better years. Power wise certainly this year has been a big year for him in terms of average in terms of uh, staying healthy all year. And he gets himself another base hit. Single in the right center his first time singles in the hole here and in the left to start the third. Well another leadoff hitter on for Mike Leak that is the third inning in a row the Brewers have reached first two came by base on balls. You know, that's kind of disheartening for a pitcher because that's a pretty good pitch there by Lee. A slider or a curveball going down and away, and Luke Roy just goes out and gets over the top of it and he finds a hole. 
Well, he started the day at 300. He had 280 a year ago. Last year, 18 homers, 82 RBIs. This year, 13 and 65. But I bet the Brewers would tell you that he has been more valuable to them this year with less homers and runs batted in than last year. Now it's Braun. Peek has not thrown Braun a strike yet today. Leak has had to work from the stretch in each of the first three innings of this game. He's closing in already on 50 pitches. Six now to Braun, all out of the strike zone this afternoon. Yeah, he shook off Mesoraco a couple of times in that pitch. Mesoraco wanted a curveball, then he wanted a, a fastball in. Both shaken off for another attempt at a fastball away, and Leak misses. So, same situation he had Braun in last time. Hit hard to right at Hamilton in center, and Billy will make the catch. One out. Here's Chris Davis. It's trailing here in the third one nothing trying to win this game and win this series two games to one. After taking three of four at home from the Cardinals they're trying to put back to back series wins together. For only the second time since the All Star break. They were down in Miami and took that series there and went to Cleveland slash home against the Indians and won that series. Haven't done it since then. They sit up the middle here by Chris Davis. With Matt Clark, an opportunity two on with one out. Yeah. Mike Leake's magic act is going to have to continue. He's pitched two and a third innings and he's had seven base runners. Those, these are the kind of games that wear you out mentally. For every time you look up, you've got to make a pitch. Every pitch you're concentrating on because you know that if you hang one, it could be two or three runs. Clark hit with the bases loaded his first time hit a fly ball to right to end the first inning. Young man who's had big league time. In the past with San Diego. But again started this year at double A in the Mets system. then triple A Nashville. And now an opportunity here in the big leagues with Milwaukee reminds me a little bit of Adam LaRoche the way he kind of sets up where he holds his hands. LaRoche also a. Left handed hitter that holds a bat high. Clark spent last year in Japan. Hit 25 home runs over there. Cracks this one out to left field. Ludwig on the move. And the Reds left fielder gets it. Two line drive outs in this inning off deliveries of Leak. Two on, two out now for Reynolds. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit red.com for details. Line to left. Ludwig is there. Boy, oh boy, you can't get three harder outs than the Brewers had to endure in the bottom of the third. I mean, to tell you, line out by Braun, line out Clark, line out Reynolds. But a zero in the board in the bottom of the third.
Walker, the announcer, very much beloved here in Milwaukee. They had a statue of him outside of the stadium, but this year they unveiled statue number two, which is more befitting of him because it honors the 1980s famous commercial, which he said must be in the front row. Well, this one is clear up at the top of section 422. It is behind home plate. It is literally the farthest seat away from the field, and it's actually behind a pole and they unveiled this earlier this season and this is one of the destination spots in the stadium there's no question about that because it uh, really when you sit here Bob's arm is basically around you and everyone stops here to take pictures and uh, I don't know I feel like the commercial where I probably need to say he missed the tag he missed the tag Hey, if anyone you, remembers that commercial. You are way, way up there, Jim Day. I am. See, what the Brewers are thinking about is helping people with their fitness because that's a long junket up there. A little exercise. Well, there's no question about that. This is a one-of-a-kind statue, and they have a plaque back here uh, commemorating his career, his Hall of Fame career. And Bob Uecker, one of the... Most well-known announcers in all the game. He is beloved here in Milwaukee. And I got to tell you, this is a pretty good idea by the Brewers. How's that view, buddy? It's not bad except the pole. There is a <laughs> pole in the way, so I can't see <laughs> second or first base. I can see home plate. From where we are sitting, you are like double a, a height away from the field. At least. Be careful coming down from there. Well, well, Jim Day, I got a question to ask. Uh, yeah. Quinn Wolcott is calling balls and strikes behind the plate tonight. How's he doing so far? Uh, I would think that he's uh, a little more consistent than the first two games of this series. <laughs> I can't tell high or low. They've been calling low strikes in this series, but uh, he's doing fairly okay. You know, but, I I think you finally found a place where Matt Latos can't find you and pester you. You know what? I wouldn't put it past him <laughs> to find me and come up here and sit next to the Uke. And of course, uh, that commercial made famous the Euchre seats, and I am truly in the Euchre seat of this state. Well, Matt Garza, rather uh, uh, Matt Latos, or the man at the plate right now, Brandon Phillips, who showed you a little love before the game. He did. I was uncomfortable in my workplace where he dropped a uh, kiss <laughs> on the cheek of me. True Phillips fashion. So lots of love going around today. Indeed. Thank you, Jim. All right, guys. If you missed what we're talking about, here is uh, before the game. Brandon laying a little love on Jim. I think I just saw him say, oh, my goodness. Brandon's a lovable guy. Well, the fans love him, and he loves the fans, and he loves the announcers, at least Jim Day. Apparently he loves Jim Day, yeah. He probably feel left out. He didn't kiss you today, did he? Well, you know, those guys love to give Jim Day a tough way to go down there throughout the course of the season, whether it be at home or on the road. He's the guy that they can take out, I guess, some of their frustrations out out on when he's down there. He's a good sport about it. Two and two to Phillips with one out. Brandon hit the ball hard but out right at Braun and right field his first time. Hard to third, but handled by Mark Reynolds. She went out. Catches a hanging breaking ball there, lines it out into right. Only the second Reds hit. First since 
Billy Hamilton let off the game with a base hit. Now Bruce is on with two out. Now the one thing that Matt Garza really doesn't do is throw a change up and that's a pitch that will go down and away from a left hander. So if you're a left handed hitter like Jay Bruce you're thinking all right everything he throws is either going to be hard or it's going to be a breaking ball coming into me. And that eliminates you having to really take the ball the other way at least until you get two strikes. Well, for Bruce only the second hit for him in this series. He really had a tough go of it since the all star break he is under 200. Just not healthy. I, you know, when you have surgery in the middle of the year, like Jay Bruce did, even though he came back and, you know, he had a meniscus tear, and everybody says how easy it is to come back from that, and uh, but you're still not the same. Uh, you, you may think you are. You may have a day where it doesn't, you don't feel any pain, but the fact is, it, you're just not as you were before, and I think that's one thing that's plaguing Jay Bruce, and you know, it's just he's one of these guys that came back to play with a, a little bit of. Injury that wasn't completely healed. Well, he looks forward, I'm sure, to resting for a little while after the season's over, then really going at the conditioning aspect of things and coming to spring training next year in good year in 2015. You know what you could probably use is a mental break. I mean, the way these guys had so much so much adversity from a standpoint of injury. And the press being on him and the expectations being so high. I mean, you get mentally fatigued. You get tired of seeing the same reporters show up in the clubhouse every day asking you the same questions. You get tired of watching tape. You get tired of trying to figure out what's wrong with my swing or what's wrong with my slider. Ludwig, a line drive in the left. That's a base hit. Davis will get it back in. So here the Reds are for the second consecutive inning, mounting a little. Rally with two men out and nobody on. Last inning was back to back walks here in the fourth, back to back two out hits. Three hits in the game now for Cincinnati. You know, in, in a lot of situations, when you've got a pitcher in the on deck circle the way Matt, Mike Leak is. This number eight hitter may not even see a strike, even if it means loading the bases. If he if he gets behind the Cozart, you would normally say, well, I'm just going to pitch around him, and if I got Matt Garza coming up next, I'll get him out. But not so much with, with Leak in the on-deck circle. To right center field, and on the run, and diving for that ball, making the catch is Carlos Gomez. Well, we have seen this guy rob the Reds of many... Many a big hit, most notably from Joey Votto's bat. But how about this one taking extra bases away from Zach Cozart and ending the inning? By the JTM Food Group.
Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And enjoy boneless Thursdays at B-Dubs, especially priced boneless wings all day. What a steal. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beers, sports. Beautiful ballpark they have here in Milwaukee. Miller Park, retractable roof. It's been closed each of the games of this series. We had it open earlier this year. The weather's been unseasonably cool up here over the weekend, although it's gradually gotten warmer each day. We play inside baseball into the bottom of the fourth, and there's a leadoff hit by Gene Segura. So he is two for two. Taking another look at that final out of the top of the inning on this play by Carlos Gomez. He's fired up. That Garza, we saw him going out. He was fired up. That's a max effort guy, isn't he? He enjoys it. You know, a lot of the players that play against him, a lot of fans that see him play, just say, well, you know, he's a hot dog. But they tell me those that travel with him and play with him on a daily basis. This guy is just wired up and ready to go all the time. Whether he's on the team plane, whether he's in the clubhouse, in the dugout, he brings a lot of energy to the team. And when you've gone through a streak like the Brewers have gone through, you need energy. I'm thinking it was earlier this year and then last year. Last year he took a Ninth inning, what looked like a go ahead home run away from Joey Votto here coming over the wall, bringing it back. Then he did it earlier this year at Cincinnati, Great American Ballpark in center field. Votto kind of gestured out to him, like, hey, what in the world? What's going on? And now this one here, off the bat of Cozart. On one hop, they're going to have a chance at second. They get an out, and the first, not in time. Phillips did the stretch down there. Not a good bunt that time by Garza. A heads up play by Leak. Well, a heads up play by Leak could be because defensively he's always looking for something like this. There are a lot of pitchers out here that wouldn't take this advantage because they would turn, look, and then throw. But Leak had it in his mind that he was going to second base and they almost turned two. So instead of Segura at second with one out, the pitcher Garza runs the bases. With Gomez at the plate. Gomez, twenty eight years old, from the Dominican, actually was. Signed as a free agent 12 years ago by the Mets. Came to the Brewers actually from Minnesota in November of 2009 for J.J. Hardy. Saw Hardy play with the, with the uh, Orioles in Baltimore recently. His breakthrough year a couple of years ago, 2012, for Carlos Gomez when he hit 19 home runs. 260 that year, 284 last year's first year as an All Star. In the mid 280s again this year. On base percentage has gone up every year. Starting outfielder for the National League All Stars this year, his first ever start. Started out in left field, even though he plays center field for the Brewers. Now 
Now three and two. Center. Another line out off the Brewers' bat. Boy, oh boy. Three last inning. Another one here. And two out. There's Scooter Jeanette. Run of this game in the second. A sack fly by Gomez plated Mark Reynolds who had walked to start the inning. In the center, that's going to get down for a hit. Garza trying to go to third. Hamilton throws way off line. That's going to allow Jeanette to head on down to second base. Ed Cedar, the third base coach, says telling him nice slide. I think he did this all on his own right here. He saw the ball going in the gap, and he says, I'm going to take a shot right here. And that guards it for a guy that has only had three hits all year long. I can't tell you how many times he's been on base. Probably less than a handful. He runs the bases pretty well, and he forces a, a bat throw there out of Billy Hamilton. So the runner goes into second. Jeanette, second and third now, and another situation for Mike Leake where he has to make a pitch now to the middle part of the order. Well, a throw right on the money would have been close at third on Garza. It was way down the line toward the outfield side. That allowed Jeanette to head on to second. I think this conversation right here, Brian Price is going to put his pitching coach's hat on. And he's going to go out and talk to Mike Leak, and the options are this. Number one is to go after Luke Croy, who's been on base twice today already. He's a couple of base hits to him. One to right field, one to left. Or do you go ahead and intentionally walk him and go after Ryan Braun, who is in the on-deck circle? Well, you just look at numbers against uh, Leak. Luke Croy, 391 at the start of the day. Braun, two for 12. Now, I don't think these kind of decisions are ever made just by the moment. Sure. I mean, I think that's why Brian Price went out there. To almost give Mike Leak an option as to what you're going to do. Well, what do you feel comfortable with right here? Do you want to go right after this guy? Or do you want to get Braun, who's not swinging anywhere near as hot a bat? But if you face Braun, you have to throw him strikes. Because you'll have the bases loaded. Well, let's see how they attack Jonathan Lucroy here. Second and third, two men out. Is this playable? Over near the dugout, Frazier reaches over but can't get it. Good effort by Todd. That by much. There's a Rocco right over there as well. Now Luke Roy one strike. 268 average for Luke Roy this year. Runners in scoring position. in the driver's seat at 0 and 2. Let's see if he can dictate his way to an out. Garza at third. Good to Jeanette out of second. Two out in the inning. Garza was 
score. Jeanette will score at 0-2. A ball right over the plate that Luke Roy could handle. And he lines it up the middle of a 3-0 Milwaukee lead. Was trying to throw a cutter and now he's trying to go inside right there. Maybe it was with a cutter. I don't know. It looked like it, it cut right back over the center of the plate on an 0-2 pitch. That's where you tell yourself, if I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss here instead of over the center of the plate. Because if you miss inside right there, all you do is load the bases with a hit by pitch. Leave it out over the center of the dish, and now you're down by three. Now it's Braun who takes a strike. Three hits in the inning. Seven in the game for the Brewers. You know, 0 2 counts have really hurt Mike Lee. Now this year, he's given up 14 hits with an 0 2 count. And that should be the lowest count, batting average wise, of any count out there. He's also given up three home runs this year on an 0 2 count. Well, he retires Braun to end the inning, but the damage done by Jonathan Lucroy. A two run single and a three nothing Milwaukee lead after four. Sixth through the 28th at Great American Ballpark. Sunday the 28th. It's Fan Appreciation Day. Presented by Walgreens. Don't miss your chance to win prizes throughout the game. For tickets, 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or go to reds.com slash tickets. Postcard entries are accepted. And don't forget, time now to tweet your photo using hashtag OhioFanPhoto. Chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. A little bit later on, we'll have today's AT&T fan photo of the game. Hard to believe, but only six. Six home games remain for the Reds. Three against these Brewers. Let's start a week from Tuesday, and then those three against the Pirates, 26, 27, 28. The curtain will come down on the 2014 season. It'll go down as a disappointing one for the Reds and Reds fans. Leak leads it off here in the fifth. He's given up three runs on seven hits. And he's making his fourth start against the Brewers this year. He worked against them on the 2nd of May in Cincinnati. Lost two to nothing, pitched well. Worked against them here on the 15th of June. A 13-4 Reds win. He pitched well in that game. And he worked against them here during that series right after the All-Star break on the 23rd of July. 
Lost five to one. Allowed four runs and six in that one. So two of the three starts he's made against the Brewers this year for Leak have been good ones. By the way, I don't know if it was right after the Hector Gomez at bat last night in the bottom of the seventh when he was called out on strikes or something that had been building. We didn't even see it happen. Read it in the paper today that uh, Johnny Naren, the hitting coach of the Brewers, was ejected from the game last night after the seventh inning. I didn't see it. You didn't no, see it. It may have happened in between innings when we were looking off the other way. That's just a little frustration, I think, from the the hitting coach you see his team which is really a good hitting team all year long really goes silent especially against you know David Holmberg who's only making it his third or fourth major league start. You, know, you can see the frustration of him down the, the Brewers lineup they were slamming their bats down Braun through his bat Carlos Gomez showed a lot of frustration. They only got a couple of hits in six innings off of Holmberg. Reds aren't doing a whole lot better today against Garza. Which, by the way, Jim, you know, and you were you were interested the other day when I let you know what Corsino meant right. in Spanish. Well, Matt Garza is of Mexican descent, and Garza in Spanish means heron. Heron, like a uh, blue heron, a gray heron. Can you use that in a sentence? I could say, well, I, I saw a a gray heron over by the pond the other day. That would be heron. And I'd say to you, what's be, a heron? Uh, Garza Real. I think is the way you would say that. Or well, you could say, I saw a gray Garza over there by the pond the other day. Good. He grew up in the agricultural part of California. In fact, his father left the fields to join the army and become a career serviceman, where he spent more than 30 years as a staff sergeant. Brother coaches high school baseball in the Fresno area. This is where he pitched, right? Yes. Well, he went to Cal State Fresno. Yes, he did. In fact, it was just a few years ago, four years ago, a little more than four years ago, but on July the 26th, he pitched a no hitter against the Detroit Tigers. And in that game, he only faced 27 hitters. He walked a batter in the second inning who was subsequently erased in a ground ball double play. And went on to retire everybody else in the game. But that close to a perfect game. First one in Tampa Bay history. To Christopher Negron. He walked back in the third, was stranded. He didn't play at all in the recent Cardinal series, came into this series one for his last 16, then probably homered in the first inning Friday night. Didn't see action last night, back in the today at third base. You're on deck. Down goes the drone on strikes. Second perfect inning of the afternoon for Matt Garza.
in the energy feature Mike Leake. 200 innings plus this year for the first time in his career. He's at technically 200.1 right now after getting through the fourth inning, giving up those two runs. Now he hits the batter here to start the uh, bottom of the fifth inning, Chris Davis. But congratulations to Mike. 200 plus innings for the first time in his career. Well, you wonder where that place is in baseball. And last year in the major leagues, there were 34 pitchers that pitched exactly 200 innings or more. Mike Leake was pretty close last year. He had 192. So that's about, you know, I just kind of wanted to put it in perspective as to where you rank when you get to that 200 inning level. It's not an easy thing to do. See if the Reds can get a pair. There's one, and that one handcuffed Kozart a little bit on the throw from Leake. So they will not get Clark at first on uh, the double play attempt. Mike Leak threw it hard. It looked like it was on the money. Maybe had a little action at the very end right there. A sinker. You know, first baseman sometimes could play now. You know what? At the very end of that play, you see that Zach Cozart pointed to his eyes and then pointed back behind the glare that's over the dugout down the first baseline, the Brewer dugout, and said he didn't see the ball. We've talked about this in the past on a sunny day. Not yet. But in an inning or two, as that glare begins to work its way across the field, that right there it becomes a very tough background, especially for a left fielder right now to pick the ball up. You can slowly see it creeping out, yeah, toward uh, from the first base side. Reynolds walk scored back in the second on the sack fly by Gomez lined one hard in the left but caught his last time. And he is disposed of here on three pitches by Lee. Two out now for Gene Segura. Couple of hits for Segura in his second full year in the big leagues. Remember, he came over at the end of the 2012 season in the Zach Greinke deal. Greinke going from here to at that time the Angels. Segura, one of their top prospects, played shortstop at the tail end of that year, All-Star year last year. Offensively down a little bit this year. Leak fields his position well, got off the mound to make that play. Segura gone, and the inning comes to an end. The Brewers leave one, but lead three nothing after five.
King moment on MLB Whip Around, weeknights at 10 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. There's our man coming down from the North Pole for a little baseball action here in Milwaukee. Who would have thought that Santa had a glove? But indeed he does. I wonder if Santa came yesterday and picked up a couple of extra Hank the Milwaukee Brewer dog bobbleheads maybe to distribute them later on under the Christmas tree check and make sure he's got the right change. Hmm. Then think Santa dealt in real I money. Those elves uh, may have short me here a little bit. No pun intended there. Frazier tries to get it going here in the red six down three to nothing now to the Brewers. Milwaukee a one run winner here three two on Friday the Reds last night five to one. Frazier puts a charge into this one high deep and gone. Home run Frazier number twenty six and the Reds are on the board it's now three to one. This is a stingy guy giving up the long ball. Yeah, he is. He's only given up 11 all year long. And considering that in this ballpark, the ball carries pretty well, that's saying something. He works down in the zone. This time he's just trying to get ahead of Frazier and he throws it pretty much right down the center of the plate. Well, that sounded good coming off the bat. Davis takes one step and stops. A little bit closer now, three to one in favor of the Brewers. Mazzarocco has popped up. He's grounded out. 0 for two in this game, one for six in the series. That RBI by Frazier puts him at 75, breaking a tie with the man at the plate now, Mazzarocco, for team honors. Mezzarocco number five for Garza this afternoon. So he comes back strong after the home run ball. You can see the action on Garza's ball when he gets it down in the zone. He's got a high three quarter arm angle, throws a lot of two seam fastballs. Rarely does he throw a four seamer. He just really works the downward plane. And that's the reason why he doesn't give up very many home runs because it's very tough to elevate the ball when it's down around your shins. Well, he gets Phillips now. Brandon is 0 for 2. Lined out. He's grounded out in the series. He has one hit, seven trips. in Chicago later on tonight start a series there tomorrow evening three night games at Wrigley Field each will start at 805 each can be seen right here in Fox Sports Ohio Alfredo Simon against Travis Wood tomorrow night Johnny Cueto against Jake Arietta Tuesday night and on the game notes today they list 
Daniel Corsino against Kyle Hendricks on Wednesday night. Three night games at Wrigley. That marks the second time this year that the Reds will have played a series featuring all night games. In Chicago. And then the off day on Thursday in St. Louis, and then that weekend series against the Cardinals. Fair ball down the line. Reynolds with a long and strong throw to get Brandon. Talking earlier about the fact that Reynolds has played mostly first base here, but he was coming up with the Diamondbacks. He was their everyday third baseman. Here's Bruce. Line drive single in the right his last time. One for two in the game, two for nine in the series for Jay. They shift him deep in shallow right is Jeanette. Shortstop Segura cheating up the middle, but still on the third base side of second. in the hole two strikes Pirates bouncing back after losing to the Cubs last night they lead 7 3 in the sixth inning today at PNC Park Cardinals at home against the Rockies have jumped out early in that game they lead 3 1 now that one's in the sixth inning. Johnny Peralta, a Cardinal home run. Brewers leading here 3 1. This one in the sixth inning. Bruce fans for the second time. Reds go in order after the Frazier home run, but they do get on the board. Number 26 for Todd Frazier on the year. Reds down by a pair at three to one. Ohio fan photo. Meanwhile, here's a look at today's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Monica taking in Reds action. Right out there in that Jay Bruce jersey.
Garza leading things off against Mike Leak here in the bottom of the sixth. Two opportunities to sacrifice bunt earlier in this game, executed on one of them. Failed to do so in the fourth, but showed good hustle getting from first to third on the hit, and then later scored. A single by Lucro. Here he strikes out. Third strikeout for Leak. First out the bottom of the six. Top of the order now and Carlos Gomez. This Brewers team playing its 150th game of the year today. They're 77 and 72. They depart after this one. And they have a uh, very important road trip coming up. A nine game trip that starts Tuesday after a day off tomorrow in St. Louis against the current division leaders. They'll play three in St. Louis. Then they'll go to the other team that's directly ahead of them. Pittsburgh play three there. Then come to Cincinnati after an off day a week from uh, tomorrow. Start a series against the Reds. So nine games, ten days, all within the division will make or break what they're going to do. First hit of the day for Gomez on base for the second time. Get some more on Carlos Gomez. Let's go down to Jim Day. Jim. Well, Carlos Gomez has a unique way of ste stepping into the batter's box. First of all, his walk-up song is Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. If you remember the Michael Jackson concerts or the videos and the Michael Jackson kick, check him out as the song is playing a little Michael Jackson kick. Hee <laughs> hee. Back to you. See, I would not have known that, Jim Day, that that was a Michael Jackson kick. He does it every at bat. And how did you get Michael Jackson to, or or Gomez to do that little sound bite there? Well, that was you. That was me. Thank you very much. Wow. Yes. He's a big Michael Jackson fan. And you have added another one to your repertoire of imitations. Jeanette a big hit back in that two run fourth. A two out solid single into center. That's the hit that sent Garza over to third base. The errant throw from Billy Hamilton allowed Jeanette to head on down to second. He later scored on the hit by Lucroy along with Garza. Gomez running. And a stolen base. Gomez has been on base. He was on base a couple of times last night. Did not get on at all in the Daniel Corsino game, but that stolen base is part of his game. The team leading 31st for Carlos Gomez. Phillips with a nice backhand stop and throw. And Jeanette is retired. Saved the run right there. I mean, that is a terrific play. That ball looks like it's going to be a base hit. And I mean, not only does he knock it down and keep it in the infield, but he gets the out of first base. Come Brian Price again. Logan Andrews has been throwing in the bullpen. There's another look at that play by Brandon. Well, you know. Mike Leak has been living on line drives being caught all day long, and he figures enough is enough. I mean, you, you can't wiggle out of every jam you get into, and so he has made a call in the bullpen. It looks like, oh, wait a minute. He, you know what? Here comes Andrusik in from right field bullpen. Brian Price never made the call, and Andrusik's going to have to go back. You can't put yourself in the game. I wonder what he thought he saw. I wonder if there's any indication by Brian standing out there that Logan would have seen an arm. First thing I saw was a bad boy coming out there with Logan on Drusen's jacket right outside the gate. In fact, he's standing out there now. Now he's going to go back in and close the gate again. Boy. 
Didn't realize he was that close to being taken out. That's about as close as you can get to being taken out of a game and not being taken out. That had strangeness written all over it, didn't it? I mean, he wasn't a, a step or two out of the gate. He was halfway to the mound from way out there in the middle of the outfield area when he realized. Well, what the heck? That, you know, it's not, he, he was not the guy to instigate that. It had to come from Mac Jenkins or Nielsen Antigua, the bullpen catcher or the bullpen coach. on the move. Billy's going to get to the spot on the warning track to haul in that drive off the bat of Lucroy, putting an end to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bat of Kozar's bat by Carlos Gomez. Look at this. Out runs it, slides, hangs on. That was the final out of the fourth inning. The Reds had two on with two out. Down at the top, one nothing. Gomez made sure it stayed that way. And then Jonathan Lucroy in the bottom of the frame, the two run single in the center. He was behind in the count, 0 and 2, when he lined that thing into center to make it 3 nothing, Milwaukee. Frazier gets on the board here in the top of the sixth. Home run for him, number 26. Tops on this Reds team. That's where we are now into the seventh. 3 1 Brewers. Today's Honda game summary. Seventh inning baseball. Back to work, Matt Garza. This marks a breakthrough, really, for Garza since his return from the disabled list. This is start number three. In the first two, he went three and then four in terms of innings. Working into the seventh here this afternoon, although the Brewers do have action in their bullpen. A right hander and a left hander. The right hander is Jeremy Jeffress, and the left hander out there is Will Smith. One run, four hits, Reds, three runs, eight hits, Brewers. Ludwig has one of those hits as he leads things off here. There's the pair in the Brewers pen. Strike three and one. This is the pitch count that Garza had in that last start against Miami, 84. 
He did it in only four innings in that game. He's working the seventh here this afternoon when he reaches 84. But he loses the leadoff man Ludwig for the Reds. The leadoff man on for the second straight time, third time in the game. And that will bring, in the terms of uh, the person of Cozart, the tying run to the plate. I can't imagine the leash from Matt Garza is going to be all that long. As desperate as this Milwaukee ball club needs this ball game. Ron Reddick he's simply not going to stand around and watch this thing evaporate in front of his eyes by sticking with the starter. And here he comes. Yeah. Again, they have the righty throwing in the bullpen Jeffers the lefty Smith. They appear to be pointing toward the right hander to come on into the game. So Matt Garza appears to be finished after six innings plus one batter Jeremy Jeff Jeffress. Will enter the contest pitching change for Milwaukee and a big hand. For the big right hander Matt Garza as he exits the field the starter for the Milwaukee Brewers he leaves with a 3 1 lead. This is our skyline chili call to the bullpen here comes Jeremy Jeffress in for Milwaukee. From around MLB, a full day of NFL action and the rest of today's sports news. Watch Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. New pitcher into the game for Milwaukee is Jeremy Jeffress. Yeah, one of the hardest pitcher, hardest throwers in the game. He averages for about 96 miles an hour on a fastball, Jeffress does. Originally drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers, but he's had a a curvy trail in, in his major league career since. And how about that? He averages 96 and he throws a first pitch curveball to the number eight hitter in the lineup. Jeffress this year for Rick Sweet down at Nashville, their Triple A club, four and one with a 1.51 ERA and 30 relief appearances with 45 Ks and 41 and two thirds innings. Earned him another shot in the big leagues with Milwaukee. His first one came way back in 2010. He has subsequently pitched in the big leagues with Kansas City, with Toronto. Back earlier this year with the Blue Jays. Released in uh, the middle of April by the Toronto club, signed as a free agent by Milwaukee. Earned his stripes down at AAA and and been given a shot here out of the uh, Milwaukee bullpen. Ooh. 
Garza six innings plus a batter four hits. One run thus far for the Milwaukee starter three walks six strikeouts. The home run ball to Frazier in 85 pitches. Can win cannot lose. He gives way here to Jeffress. To Jeanette. Tag out. Throw out. Double play. Ludwig saying no, he didn't get tagged. Second base umpire, Dan Iasonia saying, no, 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 he got you. See what we can see. Now it's going to be hard to see from this angle. It looked like Ludwig tried to avoid it as best he could, but stay in the baseline. And now Brian Price is going to go out and see, and we'll take maybe a better angle. Still hard to see. Impossible on that angle to tell whether he was tagged or not. He may be, as you said, saying he was out of the baseline. Well, then look at Rob Coughlin down in the the video part of the Reds clubhouse in there. He's on the phone probably with Jay Bell right now, and Brian Price just kind of waiting to see if there's any any video evidence that Coughlin finds, and he can relay it out there that's worth another look. Evidently not. Look where Ludwig is when he lands. He's two and a half, three steps into the grass portion of the infield. Well, he was not called, however, for being out of the baseline. He was called for, he was called out for being touched. And now Steve Smith. Let's see. Not sure how this started as Steve Smith may have been thrown out of the game here. Don't know that for sure, but the way he is arguing would lead you to believe that. Ryan Price, meanwhile, back out of the dugout. Well, the second base umpire, Dan Iasaka, he's the guy that they're talking to the most. And he is also the home plate umpire a couple of nights ago that Red Sitters had some issues with. This is the most animated we have seen Steve Smith all year long. Brian will lead the third base coach of the Reds away. Well, it does look like, doesn't it, that he's been tossed out of this uh, game? Yeah, I mean, he's not, he's not going to stop at that third base coaching box anymore. You said you thought that they did not call him out for being out of the baseline, but rather called him out on the tag. What leads you to say that? I, I, I didn't see him point at the runner and give the normal sign that you see an umpire say or do when when you're out of the baseline. Maybe he did. I I, I, I like to see it again. Freddie Benavides goes to first base. Billy Hatcher goes to third. There's Billy. We'll take another look at it again and see what Ayasanya does here. Yep, I guess he he, he did. He, point. he does point like that. He does come out of the baseline. Okay, well that answers that. So Ludwig is out, and apparently, based on what we just saw from that video, out for being out of the baseline. Then the throw to first completed the double play. Now Jack Hanahan is batting for Leak. He's quickly down two strikes. Well, Hanahan was the one the other night that got tossed out of the ball game by the second base umpire, Ayasagna, for arguing strike three. This has been kind of a throw them out series. Somebody in every game has been tossed. Hanahan strikes out, ball in the dirt. They complete the out by throwing the first, and the inning is over. Stretch time in Milwaukee. 3-1 the Brewers in front, as we'll keep it right here at Miller Park for God Bless America on this Sunday afternoon. The National Guard, as we honor our great nation with the singing of God Bless America. 
led by Bob Kozlowski. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet All-Star Game will guarantee the opportunity to purchase All-Star tickets by becoming a Reds season ticket holder with plans starting under $9 per seat. Now's your chance to guarantee your seats for the Midsummer Classic, the Home Run Derby, Fan Fest, and much more. Secure your All-Star tickets today. Simply call 513-765-7500 or visit Reds.com slash 2015. New pitcher on is Logan Andrusik. Remember, Logan came on in the uh, sixth inning thinking he was into the game, only to be sent back to the bullpen area. Now he's in replacing Leak. That sun you were talking about, those shadows creeping out now over the home plate area and almost yeah, all the way to the mound. This is one of those ballparks where it's actually harder to see the ball come off the bat than it is to actually see the ball come out of the pitcher's hand when the sun becomes. Uh, in a position to affect the game. I mean, you can see the background right there. Very difficult to see because there's so much glare. Line drives back at the pitcher can be very dangerous. Outfielders have a tough time seeing the ball come off the bat. League of quality start is 18th of the year. Six innings, three runs, eight hits. Three walks, three strikeouts, a hit batsman, and 92 pitches. Andrusik takes over. Andrusik threw in the game here on Friday night. Was very impressive in that inning, despite giving up a hit. Braun doubled against him on Friday. Then he struck out three straight Brewers. Third of the series, 
Boy, the Brewers have had the leadoff man on every inning except one. Every inning except the six, yeah. LeBron, three hits in the series and two of them against Andrusi. Chris Davis will bat. He's been on twice. A hit in the third, hit batsman in the fifth. Brewers picked up their runs. One in the second, sack fly by Carlos Gomez. Two in the fourth, two run single by Jonathan Lucroy. Reds lone run in the sixth and a leadoff home run by Todd Frazier is 26th of the year. That's a tough tough sun right there right now. Look at that. Loud foul down the left field line. Story in the paper today here in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about uh, the fact that this Brewers Club has been in first place 150 days this year, trying to avoid the fate that has uh, befell them a couple of other times since joining the National League. That is to have a uh, lead and then lose the division title, and in some instances, but not even make the postseason. They they look back at uh, 2007. And they led the National League Central for 118 consecutive days from late April through the middle of August. They built up as big a lead as eight and a half games in late June that year. Base it in the left by Davis. Well, Brewers are wearing that spot out this inning. That's exactly where the, the hit by Braun went one batter before. Better now will be Matt Clark. That 07 team ended up finishing 83 and 79, two games behind the Cubs after a terrible finish to the year after leading by as many as eight and a half in late June. The following year, 2008, a little bit more dramatic. You may remember Ned Yost was fired late in the year. Del Swain took over as the manager. Yost is now the manager of Kansas City. They got off to a great start in 08, did the Brewers at 20 and 7. And at one point were 80 and 56 and held a five game lead in the wild card race. Staggered to the end at 3 and 11. But did make the, uh, the playoffs that year as a wild card team. Here they are in 14, having had at one point. A six and a half game lead. Now looking up at the Cardinals and the Pirates. And in the wild card race, the Pirates and the Giants. Matt Clark 0 for 3. Rips this one deep into right. And a home run. His third in nine games with the Brewers. They now lead six to one. A 
Well, he's had a couple of pretty good at bats. He sent Jay Bruce all the way to the warning track the first time up and hit a line drive to the left fielder Ludwig to make it out. This time, nobody up there to catch it except for the fan who has a ticket. Well, he not only sets up like Adam LaRoche, but he's swinging the bat right now like Adam LaRoche. Six one Milwaukee here in the bottom of the seventh. That's been the story really of Logan on Drusic's year. He'll have some of the best outings that you can imagine. He looked so good in the uh, game here on Friday. He'll come in here. Base hit, base hit, home run, all sharply hit balls. Talked about this Brewers team not producing many runs at all as of late. In fact, 2.7 runs a game in the month of September. It marks only the third time they scored five or more runs in a game in the last 15 games. Diving stop Kozar. They get their man Reynolds at first. Makes a nice play right there, especially given the fact it looked to me like he got a little bit of a late start on that ball because it's tough to pick up behind home plate. Former Red Jonathan Broxton throwing in the Milwaukee bullpen. We saw him pitch here on Friday. Segura gives his counterpart an opportunity here and he throws him out. Now Gerardo Parra will bat for Jeffers. Started the game here on Friday night, went 0 for 3. He was an acquisition at the end of July from Arizona to try to bolster this Milwaukee club offensively. With the Brewers, he's hit 292 in 35 games overall in the year at 265. There's Broxton. Fourth hit of the inning against Andrusi. Back to the top of the order and Carlos Gomez. He has a hit. He's driven in a run. He's stolen the base. He made that. Sensational running diving catch of the ball hit by Cozart back in the fourth inning. With two out and the runners on the move on contact, that probably would have given the Reds a two to one lead at the time. But it saved Garza, who then came back to have a one, two, three fifth. In fact, he retired six of the last eight batters he faced. The only blemish there was the home run ball by Frazier. That catch by Carlos Gomez. Today's John Morrell hot dog play of the game. He always gets a good jump on these balls. He just outruns it along the uh, line of the grass. Stars are thrilled about it. So is that Brewers dugout. There's that same spot again. In the left field by Gomez. His second hit. Five hits in the inning by the Brewers against Logan Andrusi. Ryan Price has seen enough.
Carlos Contreras has been throwing in the bullpen. Carlos Contreras will enter this game. Logan Andrusic exits here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Reds down 6-1. Blow in this ball game so far, and it was a Barmaza pitch by pitch to Matt Clark as he comes up, sees the third pitch, a little bit of a, a hanging splitter, it looked like. It's not a slider, but it was up there in a hittable spot, and he launches it for a three run home run. Barmaza pitch by pitch. Matt Clark grateful for the opportunity to uh, be back in the big leagues. Mentioned he had a big, big power year a year ago, but playing in Japan, came over, signed with the Mets. Basically was told that if he didn't make the big league club, he would be at triple A, but that did not turn out to be the case. He spent the first half of the year at double A. Asked for, granted his release. At the end of June, went and played for Rick Sweet for a couple of months down in Nashville. Did a good job down there, and here he is in the big leagues with the Brewers, and he has three home runs in nine games with this team. Carlos Contreras takes over for Andrusic. Gives up five hits in two thirds of an inning, three runs so far. Two runners still on for Milwaukee. Gomez at first. Gerardo Parra out at second. Trenner's got the call, you recall, early this year from double A, Pensacola. He's pitching down there, nine games and a 270 ERA after starting the year on the DL, making his 17th appearance here. Tries to put an end to the bottom of the seventh. Center field. Parra will score. And it is seven to one. This has been a four run seventh inning for Milwaukee. Now they've been waiting for one of these here in Brewerland for quite a while. They had a nail biter the other night. They had a loss last night at the hands of the Reds. And they came out swinging the bats today. That is hit number one. 14. This ball club. 
They haven't scored seven runs in a game since they put up 10 in a 10 1 win at San Diego on the 25th of August. Closing in on a month ago. Haven't scored seven in a game here at Miller Park since the 8th of August when they won 9 3 over the Dodgers. So these fans have been starving for some offense. They've gotten it today. Ninth man to bat in the inning is Jonathan Lucroy. The Brewers hit around against the Reds here in the bottom of the seventh. Now the Brewers are thinking that they may be getting their offense cranked up just in time. After this three game set is over with the Reds. They will have a day off and then they will head to St. Louis for a three game set with the Cardinals followed by a weekend trip to Pittsburgh. Another off day next Monday, and Ron Renneke will bring his ball club into Cincinnati for the final three games. The Reds will see the Brewers this year. They've got a big road trip, nine game road trip, spanning 12 games or 12, 11 days coming up after this game. Well, Contreras has not proven to be the answer yet. He walks Luke Roy. Loading the bases. Braun will bat for the second time. Jeff Pico out of the dugout. We run homer by Matt Clark. RBI single by Scooter Jeanette has produced four runs here. Wonder about Contreras. Of how much time he has had between appearances. He last worked on the seventh, so it's been a week since he's been out there. He worked one third of an inning against the Mets on the seventh. And that sun still creeping out over the field. That'll be interesting to see, though. Brian Price has talked about the fact of the integrity of the game and keeping the best lineup for the Reds out there as they play teams that are in contention like the Cardinals at home like the Brewers here. You're going into Chicago for a three game series against the team that is not in contention but is on your heels in terms of trying to get out of the cellar. The Cubs have not played well lately. They had lost seven in a row before winning yesterday. They are five and a half games behind the Reds. And the two team starter series at Wrigley Field tomorrow night. It'll be interesting to see if more of the players that were called up, whether they be everyday players or pitchers, have an opportunity to appear in that series. I would imagine so. I think that was the game plan all along, but you know, baseball has this unwritten rule that that you got to go play your veteran players in games in which you know you're may have an effect on the standings and on how the divisional races and the wild card race may go. You know it's interesting that you say that unwritten rule because you see it every year at the end of the NFL season where teams that have made the playoffs and their position is secure may not play their running back may not play their quarterback. You see it in the NBA San Antonio did it this past year late games in the season. Well, they didn't play their players, some of their main stars at all. The Heat against did the same teams things. that were still running for the championship. You're right about that. Okay. And then, of course, the you know the game in Baltimore when the Reds uh, started essentially their quote unquote Triple A lineup. Everybody made a big brouhaha about that. Of course, they figured that the Baltimore Orioles had pretty much their divisional race sure. wrapped up. But they ended up coming back from a six nothing deficit right. in that ball game scored more getting runs in that game than they did in any of the other games against the Orioles. So you really never know in the game of baseball. I mean last night you start a guy in David Holmberg he's only had two or three starts in the major leagues in, in his whole career. You started Daniel Corsino the night before that as the starting pitcher his first ever major league start. Both those more out of necessity, but your point is taken that they had little to no big league experience. Runners on the move on this 3 2 and a foul ball. 
Well, you wonder if we'll see more of Donald Lutz, if we'll see more of Yorman Rodriguez, of Jake Elmore when the team goes to Chicago tomorrow, starts the three game series against the Cubs. There's Elmore right there. Norman Rodriguez at Santiago. Donald Lutz. Wonderful see Tucker Barnhart behind the plate in any of those games. He certainly would have caught. Daniel Corsino prior to uh, his arrival up here certainly would have caught last night's starter David Holmberg this year down at Triple A. Actually he would have missed Corsino last year. Corsino was in Triple A a year ago. Barnhart was in Double A. in a run make it a five run inning and an eight one Milwaukee advantage. J.J. Hoover now throwing in the Reds bullpen. Mike Leake gave up three runs in six innings. Andrusik's been touched up here for four in two thirds of an inning. Contreras has tried to get the last out three different occasions, can't get the job done. Actually, all five runs in this innings are charged to Andrusik. We're going to see that ERA, which entered the game for Logan, the 446, climb even higher. Big blast, a three run homer earlier in this inning. <laughs> Billy Hamilton. And finally, the inning comes to an end. But five, five cross the plate for Milwaukee into the eighth. Brewers now lead it eight to one.
Threads Live, the post-game edition, extended highlights. You'll hear from the manager before anyone else and more. It's Reds Live, the post-game edition. It's brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. I'm Jim Day. We thought we were going to have the matchup of Jonathan Broxton versus Billy Hamilton. Now, these the two guys are the best of friends. And you guys upstairs talked about Billy Hamilton in that interview he gave, saying that he's going to work on bunting and more bunting this offseason. He says that Jonathan Broxton has a bunting guru that he offered to give the guy to Billy Hamilton. And even though Jonathan Broxton has been traded over here to Milwaukee, the offer still stands because, as I said, two are great friends. In fact, Jonathan Broxton is one of those guys that many, many guys, you ask in that clubhouse to name the top two or three teammates, Jonathan Broxton would have been listed by most, most guys. But can't think of an opposite Pair more than Billy Hamilton and Jonathan Broxton. Billy Hamilton's always yapping, at times doesn't shut up. Jonathan Broxton hardly talks and is very reserved. And Broxton at one point shoved Hamilton into a trash can, infamous, infamously in the clubhouse. You know, you take a look at big Jonathan Broxton, you take a look at little Billy Hamilton, you think that uh, you could get two Billy Hamiltons in one pair of Jonathan Broxton's pants, I bet. One in each leg. Wouldn't that be a sight? New pitcher on for Milwaukee is Marco Estrada. Gerardo Parra stays in the game. He's out in left field. Chris Davis leaves. Jeremy Jeffers, one inning, one strikeout. Now the former starter. Estrada is into the game. This year overall his numbers 7 and 6 with a 4.61 ERA. 15 starts. This now is his 19th relief appearance. First appearance of him out of the bullpen was on the 12th of July. He's been in the pen since that time. Last time the Reds saw him was as a starter on June the 15th in Cincinnati. They gave up five runs, eight hits, and five innings. And a 13 4 Reds win. Here he gets Hamilton on strikes to start the eighth. So I mentioned earlier, Gerardo Parra, who had pinch hit, stays in the game. Christopher Negron over two with a walk in this game. It's not like Estrada had not appeared out of the bullpen before. He had worked out of the pen almost exclusively in 2011, his first full year of the big leagues, and was starting primarily in 2012, 2013, and now this year, after an unsuccessful run as a starter, they put him into the pen. Well, if you're Marco Estrada, you're thinking down the line. You know, Ron Renneke, if they get to the playoffs, they've got to have a playoff roster, and you certainly want to be one of those guys included. So he's got some personal motivation to pitch well here in a ball game that looks like it's a blowout. The drone, like Hamilton, down on strikes. Strata this year, 121 strikeouts, 142 and two thirds innings. Here's Frazier. Only run of the game on the red side, off his bat, home run in the sixth inning. Well, Strata coming in here with a seven run lead, looking like a world beater. Red 
Cubs had high hopes of making it two series wins in a row after that. 3 1 series victory at home over the Cardinals trying to do it on the road. Something that's been few and far between for them this year. In fact, they have not won a road series since they beat the Marlins. Three out of four in Miami. 31st of July through the 3rd of August. Tomahawk this ball out to left by Frazier, but Tara runs it down. And the Reds go in order for the third time today here in the eighth. Presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Make sure you're ready for Reds baseball action. 30 minutes before the start of every game. That's with Reds Live pregame presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Right here on your home of the Reds. Fox Sports Ohio. That'll come up on tomorrow night. Monday night in Chicago, the next Reds Live. Here's a look at tomorrow's probables. The former Red Travis Wood at 8 and 12 against 14 game winner Alfredo Simon. You know, he's had a bad second half, but if you look at some of his recent starts, three of the last four starts that he has made have been quality starts for him. And he'll get the baseball tomorrow night for the 30th time this year, trying to get off to a good start against the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Reds Live, 7.30. First pitch 805. Jake Elmore into the game at second base and the new pitcher is JJ Hoover. Matt Clark who had the big home run ball. At five run seventh leads it off here.
Eight fourteen and zero Milwaukee. One four zero Cincinnati. Mark is taken care of on strikes for the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. For the first time here in this series, JJ last saw action for the Reds on Tuesday at home against St. Louis when they allowed an unearned run, two hits, and two thirds of an inning. He had that short stint, of course, down at AAA Louisville at the end of the year, so he was actually one of the 10 call ups on September the 2nd. Reynolds is 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. Giving Aramis Ramirez a break playing third base today. Pitches all afternoon. And if you hang one, you're going to get a brand new baseball. And that's what JJ does right here. Clark struck out to start the inning. Then the home run ball by Reynolds. Segura up there now. Gerardo Parra. Saw him waiting there. He's on deck. And now Segura strikes out. So strikeout, home run, strikeout. Well, we've got to have one, and here it is today, folks. Our Cholula hot sauce fastball. Flamethrower gets it right by Gene Segura. Upstairs does... J.J. Hoover, 93. Here's Parra. He had a pinch hit single in the center back in that five-run seventh. Stayed in the game, went out in left field. That's for the second time today. Camera angle that we just had, and when Para 
expectorated at the plate. It looked like he was spinning confetti. A keen observer, there's no question about it. There's no expectorating in that part of the dugout. This will end the inning as Billy Hamilton will get to the spot sending this game the finale of this series here in Milwaukee to the ninth inning with a red down nine to one. Uh, we go to the ninth inning of this one. Close game through five at three nothing, then three one through six. Reds down by a couple, but Milwaukee opened it up with a five run seventh inning and another run in the eighth. Elian Herrera is now the second baseman, replacing Scooter Jeanette. And they have a new third baseman as well. That is Hector Gomez, and this is the new pitcher, Rob Wooten. That's so along our congratulations to the Cincinnati Bengals for starting at 2 and 0. They win today at Paul Brown Stadium 24 10 over the Atlanta Falcons. Well, the Bengals off to a terrific start so far this year. Two very impressive victories. Hello, Ty, we're going to get it. A look at Yorman here. He walks to the plate to bat for Devin Mesoraco. First pitch and a base hit the center, and that is the first big league hit. For Yorman Rodriguez. Congratulations for him. He didn't waste any time. How good for him. Mm -hmm. Take that ball out of play and save it as a career souvenir for Yorman Rodriguez. Well, he's been a lot of time since he's got called up sitting over there waiting for another opportunity. Got a fastball right over the heart of the plate and knew what to do with it. Yeah, you got to figure you're getting a fastball first pitch, 9 1 ball game, new pitcher coming in. Not going to pitch around you. Here's Jake Elmore. He made a start in Baltimore, that game you were talking about. Very limited playing time for Elmore, who started the year in the Oakland organization, purchased by the Reds from them, went to AAA Louisville. One for five with Cincinnati. He 
new right fielder out there is Logan Schaefer. He makes the play. And Elmore is retired for the first out. Now for Jay Bruce, we'll get a pinch hitter, Donald Lutz. Another one who hasn't seen much action at all. With the Reds this year, Lutz is hitting 186, eight hits, 43 at bats with one RBI. Lutz at double A and a triple A this year in the Reds organization. Shifted from third to first base. Flip onto the pitcher covering is not in time. Lutz is aboard. Reynolds limping around down there like that ball went off his ankle, and it may have. He would have had he twisted his ankle in an attempt to try to field it. Here he is all bent over right there. Flipped it underhand. What he really needed to do was put something on it right there because Wooten looked like he beat Lutz to the bag. Ooh, he got out of the way just in time. You would not want to be in the way of that freight train. What's the review? And we'll find out here as the Brewers apparently are. Asking for a review, challenging that play, I believe, at first base. That would be a good guess. We get Dale Scott, the crew chief. We get. Let's take a look at it. Wow, that's close. Wooten had his foot on the bag before he got the ball. The question is, did he keep it there long enough? With the ball in the glove before Lutz got there. Really, the real question will be for Wooten. Are you happier about getting the out or about avoiding the collision? Because he was about to get blinded like you do on a special team tour by Lutz going full blast down the line, and Lutz goes about as big as a linebacker. That's taking them a while. Love signaled safe when he went across the yeah, He's looking at the big scoreboard here where they're running that all over again. Oh, they're going to ring it out. They will. One more look at it. Well, like for Wooten, this is like getting the daily double. Out. And no broken body. Now it's Ludwig with a runner at second, two out, ninth inning. Reds down nine to one.
And a base hit into left field. Yorman Rodriguez being sent to the plate. Throw late. Rodriguez got in there with a slide. And it's 9 to 2. So give an RBI to Ludwig is 44. One right here and Roman Rodriguez. Just ahead of the throw. Parra's got a good arm. To go along with those two gold gloves. Mm -hmm. Now Ramon Santiago bats for Zach Kozar. time here in Milwaukee want to make sure we pass along a special happy birthday wish today to 90 year old Alma Young celebrating her birthday watching Reds baseball in Winchester Indiana happy birthday Alma 90 today field line and into the corner fair ball for Santiago Ludwig being held at third by Billy Hatcher double for Ramon Santiago for the Reds pinch hitters eighth double of the year the Reds have three hits here in the ninth after picking up only four hits for the first eight innings Get your spot due up. Jason Bourgeois will bat for J.J. Hoover. Bourgeois had a pinch hit infield single last night. Standings: The Cardinals, the division leader, leading in the ninth, 4-1 at home over Colorado. Pirates are playing at home against the Cubs. That game, a final. Pittsburgh won at seven to three. They need a win to just to keep pace. 
to the mound. And the fourth. And the game is over. The Brewers take two out of three from the Reds. They blow it open with a five-run seventh. And they win it by the final score here this afternoon of nine to two over Cincinnati. We'll come back with more in a moment.